Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing good. After my lecture on anti-HIV drugs, I have been getting messages to upload a video on post-exposure prophylaxis of HIV. So today I am coming up with a new video that is on post-exposure prophylaxis, which are given by the WHO and the National AIDS Control Organization guidelines. So before beginning with the post-exposure prophylaxis, in short about the HIV and how it causes the AIDS. So HIV is a human immunodeficiency virus and it is the virus that leads to acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS. So we have already learnt about the concept of CD4 plus cells which are T helper cells. So I won't go much deeper into that. So I will stick to the topic of today's post-exposure prophylaxis. So this post-exposure prophylaxis, in short, it is known as PEP. And this PEP involves taking anti-HIV drugs as soon as possible after having been exposed to an any injury. So to be more effective, this PEP must be begin within 72 hours after exposure before the virus has the time rapidly replicate in your body. So before the virus starts replicating in your body, you should take this post exposure prophylaxis regimen within 72 hours of exposure. Okay, because the virus outside of your, the virus outside of your body doesn't have much effect but once, once it ends, enters into the human body, it starts multiplying rapidly with a faster speed. And this post-exposure prophylaxis consists of at least two to three anti-HIV drugs and that has to be taken every day for one month. Okay. So who needs, before going to who needs the prophylaxis, you should know ki what are like, you know, what do you mean by prophylaxis? Many of you get confused what do you mean by prophylaxis this prophylaxis is nothing but a disease anything which is given to prevent a disease yani means disease prophylaxis in short if i want if, if i want to describe it it is nothing but disease preventions prevention and post exposure prophylaxis involves taking anti hiv drugs as soon as possible after you have been exposed to HIV to try to reduce the chance of becoming HIV positive. Okay, in which we have occupational post exposure prophylaxis, especially in cases of healthcare workers and non occupational post care post exposure uh, prophylaxis. That is, one is occupational, another one is non occupational PEP. Okay, in non-occupational PEP, we have like condom breakage and any sexual assault. And this medication may have side effects that can make it difficult to finish the complete regimen. And this PEP is not 100% effective. The point to be noted here is that it is not effective fully. 100% effectiveness, it can't be seen with this post exposure prophylaxis it does not guarantee that someone exposed to hiv will not become infected with hiv okay who needs pep every person needs p post exposure prophylaxis even without getting exposed to any affected individual no it is not like that this pep is usually used for anyone who have been exposed to hiv and especially the healthcare workers who have the greatest risk they have they can be exposed by hiv there are following there are few ways where healthcare worker gets exposed to this hiv infected contaminations okay like needle stick injuries or any cuts getting blood or other body fluid in the in their eyes or mouth getting blood or other body fluid on their skin when it is scraped or by or affected by dermatitis okay so the risk of hiv transmission in this ways by it in my example by needle stick injuries as i have already told you the chances are less than one person for exposure but less than one person be hai so we have to consider that one person because prevention is always always better than cure why can't this 
post exposure prophylaxis therapy be taken after 72 hours from the point of exposure this question has been asked by many of my students so in short you have to remember one thing the earlier you give the more benefit you will gain <clears throat> this hiv because this hiv vir this this virus grows at a very faster rate once it enters into the human body and that is the reason if you start taking this post exposure prophylaxis for more than 72 hours after exposure the medication can't keep up and many research studies have shown that this post exposure prophylaxis has little or no effect in preventing hiv infection after a mark of 72 hours so you should remember that within 72 hours of any exposure to the contaminated blood products or any fluids the post exposure prophylaxis has to be started better if post exposure uh, post exposure prophylaxis starts within 6 hours from the injury this is as per the who guidelines that means within 6 hours if you start the pep so there are high chances that that patient will not get infected after the exposure so what different kinds of exposure we have see you should remember the exposure to a large amount of blood the blood came in contact with cuts or open wounds or sores on the skin the blood was visible on a needle that stuck someone or exposure to blood from someone who has a high viral load okay these are the different kinds of exposure but for serious exposures it is recommended using a combination of three drugs for four weeks for less ex serious exposure the guidelines recommends treatment with two drugs for four weeks that is for which we have this zidovudine and zidovudine and lamivudine you should remember this so exposure in fact for low risk sources we have a criteria when low risk what do you mean by low risk low risk is nothing but hiv positive but asymptomatic low hiv titer and high cd4 count this in this low risk cases we give a drug called zidovudine in short which is uh, which is which is coded as azt zidovudine 300 mg plus lamivudine 150 mg twice a day for one month twice a day for one month let me repeat again zidovudine 300 mg plus lamivudine 150 mg twice a day for one month this regimen comes for low risk sources and for high risk sources we like the how to how to define high risk source high risk source is nothing but symptomatic patients having high hiv rna titer and low cd4 count in this high risk sources we give a regimen of zidovudine 300 mg plus lamivudine 150 mg twice a day for one month and along with this we add indinavir along with this we add indinavir 800 mg thrice a day all the and all the three these three drugs has to be given for one month you just have to add in high risk cases you have to add indinavir and all these three drugs has to be given for one month duration without fail so the drug regimen we have here like two drug regimen that is zidovudine and lamivudine and zidovudine 300 mg bd lamivudine 150 mg bd okay and it has to be given for 4 weeks or 1 month and in case of three drug regimen especially in cases of high risk sources we have a combination this is a brand name given and we have a combination of this drugs that is zidovudine plus uh, lamivudine and the indinavir or any or any other uh, drugs which are the uh, uh, 
Egg any other antiviral drug can be added with zidovudin. Okay. This is a picture which shows the uh, uh, of the drugs. Yeah. This is a brand name Travuda, Reataz, and Norvir. So coming to what are the side effects? Is it safe? Can everyone take this medication? You have to remember because side effects are equally important and because of these side effects, these drugs are non-compliant to the patients. Most of the patients who receive this drug, they have n number of side effects, especially nausea and vomiting because of the intolerable effects of these drugs. Okay, so the most common side effect from this post exposure prophylaxis medications are nausea and and, and uh, nausea vomiting and severe loose stools and this makes uh, patient very uncomfortable and as a result patient stops taking this medication that's the reason before you start the uh, post exposure prophylaxis to any person who has um, you know who, ha who has come in contact with blood products of hiv patient we check their weight before starting pep and after completing the one month of course okay now coming to the prevention strategies what are the ways the we can prevent to get exposed to some HIV infections. So healthcare workers should assume that the blood and other body fluids from all patients are potentially infectious. They should therefore follow infection control precautions all the time. So whenever they are attending any patients, they have to follow all the protocols to prevent from the infection. It is even said that consider every patient HIV positive unless it is proven. And these prevention strategies can be you know, managed by routinely using the barrier methods such as gloves, goggles, especially when anticipating contact with the blood or body fluids, immediately washing hands and other skin surfaces after contact with the blood and the body fluids, and carefully handling and disposing of sharp instruments. This point is very important. Carefully handling. Okay, I have shown, I will show you the picture of it, how to handle it. So, proper wearing of the gloves goggles whenever you're handling the handling the body fluids or the blood products proper use of disposal containers and this never a careful handling and disposing of sharp instruments is very very important never use such techniques by hold by holding a needle in your hair there are high chances that you'll get pricked by this infected blood and as a result you may land up in issues so it's always better to take proper pre precautions so to conclude this we have like uh, to conclude this this post exposure prophylaxis is the use of anti hiv drugs as soon as possible that is within six hours of exposure to prevent HIV infection and this PEP this point is very important just keep it in your mind that PEP can reduce the rate of infection in healthcare exposed healthcare workers to 79% it can reduce the rate of infection to it is it is not 100% effective okay many research studies have said that it is even less than 70% Okay, so the benefits of post exposure prophylaxis for non occupational exposure have not yet proven, and this use of PEP is controversial because some people fear it will encourage unsafe behavior. It means that it has like the moment you give authorization to this drugs many people will go for like non occupational practices like without without using any protective measures involving uh, involving in uh, physical activities and thereafter the people and thereafter people will start taking this post exposure prophylaxis but remember that this is not a good practice to consume post exposure prophylaxis without any proper risk okay so that is all for today thank you and have a good day